Hello and welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Teniola Shubuwele. We begin in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the election board has told participants in Sunday's presidential vote it cannot organize the ballot on time. The Electoral Commission summoned candidates to a meeting in Parliament on Thursday after media reports of a delay due to problems with voting materials. Phyllis from the meeting says the Commission's president, Cornel Nanga, announced the Commission was technically unable to carry through the election as planned for December 23rd. The election is meant to choose a successor to President Joseph Kabila, who is due to step down after 18 years in power. Preparations for Sunday's vote, already postponed repeatedly since 2016, were disrupted by a fire last week, which the Commission said destroyed 80% of Kinshasa's voting machines. In Madagascar, both candidates competing to become Madagascar's next president have claimed victory after yesterday's election runoff. Only a small percentage of the results have been declared. The results from 5% of all polling stations show Andrei Rajoelina leading with 57%. Two former presidents contested in Wednesday's second round, Mark Ravalomanana and the man who outstood him in a coup in 2009, Rajoelina. The nation is hoping for a peaceful outcome with no repeat of the political chaos of almost a decade ago. Both leaders promised to put the past behind them when they enter the race and say they would accept the result of the polls. African leaders have been asked to enact the necessary legislation that promotes free, fair and credible elections, which can eventually translate to good governance. This advice was contained in a 28-point communique at the end of a two-day high-level working group meeting on mitigating disruptive application of information and communication technology on electoral processes in Africa. The event was held at the Uloshikun Obasanjo Presidential Library in Abekuta, the Ogun State capital. And I think it's one problem that we must probably think of how we do not let the size of this room fool you. It is filled with high-powered individuals who have at one time or another controlled affairs of their country and processes. Former presidents of Nigeria, Ghana and Sierra Leone, as well as the former Prime Minister of Kenya, have gathered experts in various fields of leadership organizations, information and communication technology to articulate ways disruptions in the elections in Africa can be mitigated through ICT. To achieve this, the Director, Center for Human Security and Dialogue, Professor Peter Okebukola, says the right policies must be put in place by African leaders. Elections begin with good laws. Hence, African governments are urged to enact and apply laws that are conducive to credible elections, including the use of ICT in the election process. The chairman of the meeting is former president of Nigeria, Olusha Gombasanjo, he is of the opinion that with ICT, there lies an opportunity for the continent to advance its electoral processes, only if it is handled by those willing to make it work. We have seen that uh, with good intentions and in good hands, uh, ICT is something we need, definitely, uh, in the electoral process. The 28-page recommendation has been written. What is left to be seen is whether the suggestions will be implemented by its intended target for the improvement of democracy in Africa. Joining us now is an African affairs analyst, Declan Hikari, for more on this. Hello and thank you for joining us on Network Africa. You're welcome. In light of what's happening in DRC, like you just heard, why is the electoral process in Africa most times flawed and difficult? Yeah, uh, thank you so much. I, I've said it uh, time without number that the major crisis we have when it comes to election in Africa is because we have leaders who prefer power than service to humanity. And as long as it remains that way, you are bound to see a situation where you have do or do or die politics. You are, find, you, are, you are bound to see a situation where you have politicians who are head men are winning the election at all costs. And at the end of it all, they manipulate every process to make sure that they retain power or they put in those that they feel will obey their, their whims and caprices. Or do you think in Africa we'll get to the time where we can have free and peaceful elections? Or is yeah. it possible for us to have free and well, 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 for now, for now, for now, for now, with the kind of leaderships we have in Africa, I don't think it is possible. 
it is it is not possible because uh, you find out a situation where uh, a president wants to run first term, second term, third term, fourth term, even to seventh or eighth terms. And how do, how does he achieve that without manipulating you know, the processes? And uh, I think I think it's, it's quite wrong and quite unethical for most African leaders at, at the rate at which they want to occupy positions. How do we stop that, this mentality of occupying positions for such a long time? Yeah, we, we can stop it by, by, by amending our laws. But you look at it again, who are those to amend these laws? The, 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 the legislators are also part of the business of the day. And that is why, instead of you seeing a separation between the executive and the legislative arm in most African countries, you find an alliance, an unholy alliance, Unholy alliance because you find out that it's now uh, a situation of rub my, uh, rub, rub my back, I rub yeah. your shoulder. Then I, I will help you manipulate, I'll help you not change the, the electoral act or I'll change the electoral act to favor you. Why you also favor me, either monetarily or otherwise. So, so we're, we're, we're getting to a situation where it's only the people who will say no to this. And we're getting to that level where Africans will say enough is enough to manipulations and to, you know, sit uh, uh, sit tight uh, kind of governance. What hope do the ordinary people have if everything seems to be against them? What hope do they have? So what? What hope do the ordinary people yeah. have in electing other presidents if everything else seems to be against them? The legislation, there's no way out. Yeah, I think for now, the only hope ordinary people have in Africa is to hope in God. And uh, I think that's the ultimate. Uh, that's, that, that's the ultimate because even, even if, even if you, you vote rightly, even if you vote rightly and somebody wins rightly, would that person do what is right to the people? Will he not get there and begin to do what he feels is good for him and for his party? Okay? So until we begin to get leaders who are conscious of the mindset of the people they want to govern, people who want to get to power to serve, getting power is to serve. It's not to, to, to feel as if you are, you are above all. And that is why in Africa you find out that our leaders want to feel that they are above all. And that is wrong. It's, 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 it should be accepted. That leads me to my next question, actually. Are African elections producing good, credible leaders? Well, 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 well I, 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 as long as the electoral umpire de declares you the winner, uh, 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 and uh, nobody contests it in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the law court, I see it as credible. I see it as you have won the election. Mm -hmm. But my own concern is, what happens after you have won this election? Will you do what you have promised the people? Will you keep to the promises you made while campaigning? How many of them have kept to these promises? How many of them have done what is right to the people that voted them in? So until we get to that level where winning an election becomes service to humanity, then you will get to a situation where you have few people who want to go into governance. Because at that point in time, it won't be long, it will, it will, it will no longer be business as usual. It will no longer be lucrative. At the point where salaries are portioned to, to, to our office holders, where they know at the end of the month is their salary, not that they will just go there and, and manipulate salary for themselves. At that point, we'll begin to get the, be the best leaders and we'll begin to get the best people to occupy spaces in Africa. Would you say this is the reason why it's difficult for the continent to move from underdevelopment to development? Of course. When, when you don't have the right people occupying the right space, if you don't have the right people occupying the right space, you, you just be going around and around and around. And what happens is that you find that they keep on recycling. Somebody has done two term or three term as allowed by the constitution of his country, and he wants to go. You will find him starts, I mean, trying to put in somebody, a stooge, who also told the same line. So, so at the end of it, or what happens? There, there can't be any development because development comes from the heart of those who are leading. Are they there to serve the people? If they are there to serve the people, I tell you, Africa will be better than most of the continent. I can assure you of that. Africa will be better than most of the places in the world. But how come most of us in Africa who are leaders? Forget the fact that we're to develop our, our own continent. I mean, they, they go out, out of the shore of Africa and they see things there and they refuse to, to, to copy from the good things they are seeing there. All they want to do is to manipulate the process, enrich themselves, pack the money. Instead of even keeping the money in Africa here, they take the money to somewhere that is already developed. So you can see the mentality.
there is a wrong mentality that African leaders already have. Okay, so just on a final note now, how can we move on with our elections? How can we progress with our elections? Yeah, well, well I think it's a gradual process, if I put it that way. But it will take us, it will take us a long time before we could, we could get there. It will, it will take us a long time because uh, we're seeing it now, people are seeing it. We're, we're getting to a situation where Africans, the citizenry itself, will begin to fight the battle themselves. And at that point, I can assure you that the so-called leaders, the so-called cabals, will begin to recognize the fact that if they don't do what is right, they are bound to face crisis within the community that they decide. Just on a final note, I want to bring in DRC with what's happening. The presidential elections are on Sunday. And with all this that's happened, do you see Kabila holding on to power for more terms? Oh, of course. Of course. What, what, what do you expect? What so, do you expect? So you think the elections aren't going to go on? It's been postponed since 2016. Yeah, it's been postponed. Uh, you, can, you can understand what is going on there. It's, it's clear. How many of them want to leave power? How many of them? And that's the truth. It's either they want to stay on and manipulate the electoral process to, to keep on staying there, or they do so many funny things to make sure they are there. And why are they there? They are there because they have some skeletons to cover. And the truth is this, if you don't have anything to cover, then leave the seat and go and let somebody else come in and, if possible, probe you. But how many of them will want to be probed? Yeah, definitely, Carrie, African Affairs Analyst. It's been interesting getting your thoughts on this discussion. Thank You're you so much for welcome, yeah. Network Africa. Thank you.